You're watching Explore the Bible, Sunday School Lesson from Redbud Baptist Church. Redbud Baptist Church is located at 801 Slide Road in Lubbock, Texas, and the Sunday School it starts at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday. Grab your Bible. Let's study together. Hey guys, we're here with the to do the Explore the Bible lesson. I got Andy Hager right here with us, and we're going to uh, pray and, and uh, get our stuff gathered together here and start the Bible study. But go grab your Bible, go grab your donut or your coffee, and uh, come do a Bible study with us. I'm going to pray, and Andy will start leading us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you. Thank you for an opportunity to learn, learn more about you, Lord. As um, Jesus is going through here and picking up his disciple. And they're going to start learning and leading the church and, and, and in faith, just drop everything that they're doing to follow him, to start leading in his ministry. That Lord, that's a good lesson for us to start learning. That in obedience, we need to be following you in all things. And some things we need to drop and some things we need to keep, but some things aren't necessary and we need to strip away so that we can follow you, and in so, others will be following us as we follow you. So, Lord, let us apply this lesson to not only our heart, but our hands and feet. Let it be an opportunity for us to learn just one more thing about you, Lord. Of course, let the Holy Spirit lead this. Let it be your words and not ours. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Hager is um, Andy Hager. That's great. You know, I just call you Hager. That's, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I've been called you know, worse. Anyway, Andy, go ahead and Hagar get started here. Um, <laughs> well, that's the comic strip, though. So, exactly. I mean, you don't fit the the Viking at all. <laughs> oh, thank you. I guess. <laughs> um, we've we've been studying in Luke, and um, we've gotten into Jesus's early ministry yeah. years. Um, Luke is the only one that gives it. Well, Matthew did does. Uh, tell us about the visit that, uh, um, or the dream that Joseph had before Jesus was born, and then the, their escape into Egypt and the wise men. But uh, Luke gives us more information about the early life of Jesus than any of the other mm -hmm. Gospels. He, uh, of course, the, from the conception, the birth, his dedication at the temple, and he's the only one that gives us a glimpse into the, the pre-adolescent Jesus uh, when, he was, when he was left left in Jerusalem, uh, and about for 20 years there, we don't have any scriptural reference to Jesus. It would have been interesting to have followed his life, but um, we were told that he grew and that he was obedient to his parents. Of course, we know he, he, he lived the perfect life. But um, Mark and John began with his baptism, and we... Um, also uh, see that that in Luke. Uh, along, along with the baptism, we learn a little bit about John the Baptist and about his, his birth and life. Um, after Jesus was baptized, he was taken into the Judean wilderness where he uh, experienced the, the temptation that in three parts. And after each individual temptation, he quoted a verse of scripture. Yeah. And so we go on to the next one. Well, um, at the last temptation, we see Satan quoting scripture. You know, Shakespeare, I think it was, said that, that Satan could use scripture for his own purpose. And he tried here. This is in um, Luke 4, verses um, around verse 10. It says, and he quotes something from, um, from Psalms. He says, he will command, command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in his hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So he's yeah. trying to get Jesus to, and of course, Jesus answers him and says, you will not tempt the Lord, the Lord right. your God, you know. And that was the end of that for right now. And, they, and I think it was Mark said that the angels came and ministered to him. And when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. And all through his ministry, you know, the devil was there tempting him, which culminated in, in the uh, 
in, in Gethsemane, which was perhaps the final temptation. But um, one, one scripture that Mark, that Mark relates, I think it's interesting, it's, it's uh, where Jesus, you know, he tries to tell, on three different um, occasions, he tries to tell his disciples that he's going to die and raise, you know, be raised again, and they mm -hmm. don't quite get it. Well, the first time, um, Peter just, he, he just, he didn't want to accept the fact that the Lord was going to be rejected and persecuted, and he kind of rebuked Jesus, and he said, you know, don't, don't say that. Right. I mean, you know, you got the friendship going on, the love for each other, yeah, but also you know, he's thinking about yeah. that, that kingdom that's going to happen right here on exactly. earth, you know, get away from the Roman he persecution, was saying, you know, take second it over coming, here. Yeah, yeah, was more or less. And, um, well, Jesus rebuked him, and what did he say to him? Get behind Get me. Get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so Satan was real. And I, now I personally, I don't like the term, the devil made me do it, because that gives the devil power. And the devil doesn't well, have power over then. us. That's, that's going back a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but we make mistakes, you know, we sin out of our, and the devil is there to try to use that against us. Right. But I don't I don't think he actually makes us do now, it. No, did he? Did did he use the scripture out of context there, the Who? devil, on this on that last part of the temptation? Did, was he using the the scripture out of context? Uh, the de the de the Satan. Satan. Yeah. He it, he may have been, but what yeah. he was convinced, you know, that, that you you can you can come down from here. When that was yeah. that's where yeah. he told. Yeah. yeah, he was trying to, uh, and well, and that well in Nazareth last week we see that Jesus was, you know, they were wanting him to perform miracles, and he's that's. You know, I'm not yeah. going to do it for that purpose. Yeah, I think, you know, he's doing the miracles for love. Yes. Now, yes, it did attract attention. People were excited about that. That might have been the only entertainment then. They didn't have Netflix or or, <laughs> or TV or, or any of these things going on. So, you know, that, that was what was happening. Of course, you know, some people were talking about Messiah. Some people were talking about the hope he has. Some people were talking about the way he talks. Never seen anybody that uh, ever or heard anything close to this as far as interpretation of scripture and things. So there's a lot of things that was going on that had people following him. But, you know, some of them were following him for the wrong reason. Yes. You know? yeah. And, uh, uh, of course, we see later when the Pharisees came along, of course, see, they didn't like... Uh, they didn't like a lot of things. Yeah, they didn't like a lot of things. They didn't like their hypocrisy showing up. I, I, I mean, yeah. it, it, maybe we... Not, not, not to compare Jesus to, uh, you know, President Trump or anything like that, but it seemed yeah. like... It didn't matter what Jesus did, just like you know, it didn't matter what Trump does. You know, people, uh, the Pharisees were going to paint it negative. Well, uh, if, the if people paint it negative, so everything they're going to do, they're going to try to show, you know. So it, it got where they could not. There wasn't much they could do. So, so they had good things like, uh, well, you, you healed a blind man on the Sabbath. You're not supposed. That's work. You're not supposed yeah. to be doing that. So, yeah. oh my gosh, we're going clear to this. To, to, to try to show that Jesus is, is um, a bad person or something like that. And, he, you know, of course, you know, Jesus always has the right thing to say. And, you know, of course, you're going you're going to work with your your cattle and heal them if they're sick. You know, if you if you're uh, if your child is sick, you're definitely going to be working to help mm -hmm. get them better. And it matters if it's on a Sabbath or not. Whatever day it was, you're going to be doing that. And um, so healing on the Sabbath is probably not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it, and the fact is, if if they wanted an excuse not to right. accept Jesus, they're so going to find it, they, they, just like we do today. Yeah, they, they just happen to have, a, they already have a design notion that they want to do, mm -hmm. a plan or whatever they're putting in place. And that's where their mind's coming from. It's coming from that already pre-designed idea that they have. And that was that they want to get rid of Jesus because Jesus, they felt, was a threat. Mm -hmm to uh their way of life and if they could have kind of gotten him to follow their what they their their their, their pc or woke right characteristics you know <laughs> yeah. it might it might have been all right but uh he um uh, yeah. that's that's not what he was all about and uh, yeah i i didn't mean to get political there I was no, saying, no, know, no 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 uh, no when, when, when they're telling that 95% of the hot headlines yes. were, were negative towards yes. in, in all these four years, and it's like, wow, that's uh, that, that's poignant one way, pretty much. <laughs> so anyway. And, but, and like I said, if they wanted an excuse not to serve Jesus, they were they, were they, they did one. not. Yeah, they, they, they'd find one one way or another, yeah. and anything they can do to try to point. Which makes you think there wasn't very much that they could find, was there? No, <laughs> not at all. And, and that, that, so, that, that infuriated them more. And, and, you know, when, when he starts pointing towards their... Uh, heart mm -hmm. 
um, because the way that they were interpreting the scripture was losing the love of God. And uh, when you start pointing to that, that's when it's like, okay, we got to kill this guy, you know? And, and I mean, I'm not trying to overgeneralize any of this stuff. I mean, you know, they, they were being blinded by yeah, their own blinded. desire. Yes. And, and um, you know, Jesus was pointing that out to him. So, so most of the, the harsh stuff you see in the new Testament that Jesus is pointing towards people is actually towards the Pharisees mm -hmm. and Sadducees because they were being blinded by their own internal desires and stuff so and 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 the pharisees and sadducees were actually not really that friendly with each other the sadducees of course were more more yeah. um in with the roman government which the pharisees didn't like but it was right. kind of one of those things that my enemy's enemy is my friend right but you the, know they the, were <laughs> their main uh, viewpoints were on the resurrection yes you know and yeah. they had problems with the but but they one, came together yeah. to for this, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're the threat. <laughs> my enemy's enemy is my, my friend. friend. <laughs> so yeah, but um, and we're just trying to get chapter four here to chapter five here. Yep, we were, we yep, were just we're all, like we're, five we're minutes getting there. here. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Um, after um, after the temptation, after he left mm -hmm. the Judean wilderness, yeah. um, in John we don't we don't have you know he we have the the Nazareth um, uh, incident, but. There was some uh, ministry in early, early, early ministry in Galilee, right. that, and that's actually where um, he met Peter. So we don't think that in today's that I don't think that was the first time he had met Peter. No, no. He because uh, actually, yeah, Andrew, Correct. and another His man brother, yeah. were uh, following John the Baptist, and, and he saw he, the, the Jesus, Messiah. and and so Andrew. Uh, brought his brother Simon yeah, to meet he, Jesus. Yeah, he ran home or whatever. Yeah. And, then got and it also sick. mentions Nathaniel and um, Philip at that time. And they were followers of Jesus. And, right. uh, okay, now, this is just kind of my own thinking, and you correct me. You know, before they were disciples, they followed Jesus. Correct. They became disciples so that they could learn from Jesus. That's right. what disciples mean. And then... As apostles, that they were leaders. They went from following, True. learning, to I mean, leading. The, the main difference in the apostles and disciples is to do with actually the eyewitnesses to yes. Jesus, and that's yeah. that's usually where they that, come exactly, along. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and, and he, I think yeah. at the time that he's got them all together was when you know he went off and prayed, you know, all night, and then the Father, and then you know, and he had a, he had other followers besides his disciples. You know, there's been time. You know. The, the, I guess if you think about circles, and maybe we touch a little bit about circles here too. You know, he has his inner circle, James, John, and and Peter, Simon Peter, uh -huh. and then he, you have the outer circle, which is going to be the other uh, disciples, disciples of the right. twelve, and of course, you know, that eventually becomes eleven. But then you have like fifties, and then you have five hundreds, and then you have thousands. So uh, it's a uh, it's different amount of people following him in different circles depending on what was going mm -hmm. on. But, but you these know, were his disciples who were learning from but, him. But you can see which ones were the inner core mm -hmm. disciples, which ones were the outer core disciples. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that could have been like, and, and it's not written in the Bible here. We don't know for sure. But, you know, like maybe May Peter was uh, teaching these other disciples and, and Andrew you know, or, you know, or uh, James or John were teaching these other disciples and stuff like that. And that filled out the 12. But anyway, there's no way of really knowing for sure. We know that. There seems to be circles there that he's working in, and actually through Luke we know that he puts them in a certain order too. Because when he puts these uh, disciples together in the in the scripture, if you look through these and pay attention to it, you know yeah. this, this one's kind of the first ones that he's always talked about. These are in the second tier that he's always talked about. These are in the third tier, and he's kind of got a little bit of an order there. And uh, <laughs> excuse me, that's something that that's for another study. But mm. it's pretty yeah, well, that'll probably be and and. We won't complete Luke this order. We, right, we're, we're going. We're actually doing so, Luke this yeah. next order too, too. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, also he uh, his this first trip in in Galilee is when he turned the water into wine. This was a an earlier yeah. miracle. Um, yeah, woman, it's not my time yet. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but I will do it for you because you're my mother. Yeah. And, and I love you. Um, and he more or less uh, sets up his ministry around the Sea of Galilee. He does for, yeah. for that. And then um, he goes to Jerusalem um, for the Passover, and there's a little, uh, some call it the first cleansing of the temple, but I, it, that could be conflated with the later one. But 
anyway, uh, probably during this time was when he uh, encountered Nicodemus. Right. And now this is all in John. This is not in Luke. Right, this, right, this, right. Is, this is, it, uh, according to the harmony of the Gospels. It, and, and, yeah, I'm part. sure most of the people in, in our group that are listening right here, but if you didn't know that there is a parallel between the Gospels. You know, yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Yes. And if you ever get a, a harmony, like you're talking about a harmony Bible and stuff like mm -hmm. that, it's kind of neat. It's a good. I have two a, of them, and they're, they're, I've got one it. King James, yeah. and I've got the NIV, and and they're pretty, pretty. Yeah. They agree pretty much on on the. Um, I mean, it's it's chronology. Going to be, it, it's going to be if there's any differences to say, it's more to do with viewpoint. Yes. You know, we we argue about uh, who was actually at the, I guess at the tomb. Or something like that, and some people would have one woman first, another woman first, things like that. But it's just you know, if you have eyewitnesses or people that are telling the story, you know, some of them are going to put it in this order, and some are going to put it in that order. And you know? and and They're well, both. it's just like you know, working here in the office, right. that you and Carlos and Lin, Linda and Susie are here. And somebody comes in, they see Susie. Who's in the office? Susie and Linda. Uh, you know, you and Carlos are in the back. You know, maybe not not being seen or. If they say, well, what did you do today? And you list what you did, you don't necessarily list it in the order. Sometimes it'll be uh, the most important event. If Franklin Graham were to walk into the office one day and and uh, you you were to ask what happened to the office, say, well, we had a visit from Franklin Graham. Right. It wouldn't necessarily be. Uh, there were other things that went on. That was probably, but it, it's you're right. I mean, yeah. it's it's we tell it from our our viewpoint. Right. And and, and, and I realize uh, this is all God breathed. I, yes, I believe yes, that totally. yes. And I believe that, you know, when you read the Bible and study it, if you study it in context, that it never disagrees with itself. Now, I can take little parts of that and take it out of context. Mm -hmm. and But that's not the way you do like, Bible study. Like Satan did. Yeah. You, you, yeah, exactly. You have to bring it into context, the whole well, overline. If it sounds like it's contradicting something else in the Bible, then you need to stay a little bit longer because it's not. Yeah. You know, but, you need to figure out why it's, it's being written a little bit different here. Why is, you know. You know, just like the, the temple and the, the feeding of the thousands and, and, you know, why is it a little bit different? Or the genealogy that we find out in, in Luke it's compared two, to one of the Gospels. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one's going through, you know, Joseph and one's going through Mary. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, uh, you have to figure out why before you say, well, obviously, and, and they he, disagree with each other. No, they, they don't disagree with each other. If you do more research, you find out why it's put in that way because you got to put it in context. And you find out that it's all written. Um, I thought he had a certain any, message for certain yeah. The, and Luke, you know, Luke, uh, Luke's message was a little not not different, but emphasis, the emphasis was was different. And of course, he yeah. emphasizes that God, uh, the son, Jesus has been the son of God and, uh, you know, also. Uh, yeah. And you know, John starts off with, you know, in the beginning, you know, and beginning, stuff like right. that. And everybody else starting off with, uh, you know, the Mary and Joseph and the baby and all that stuff. And, and it's um, but when you read it in the parallel or the harmony mm -hmm. type stuff, then you can actually put the whole uh, and that would, in your head. The that whole would thing be a good, good study. It's, it's good. It's, it's good. good, good Anytime study. you're working through the Gospels in the New Testament, it's good to just grab mm -hmm. that book if you don't have one. But but grab it in the harmony of the Gospels or something like that or Gospels and parallel something and, and read it. And they'll actually put the little sections that are mirrored. You know, they put them mm -hmm. together there in a chart. And if the if it's just like John alone, you'll see John's here, and they they try to put it in a uh, and, that, and that's what these these accounts that order. we're talking about it are are just in, right. in John, and he did that for a reason. <laughs> right. But um, uh, anyway, like I said, that this was probably when his encounter with with Nicodemus occurred, and uh, also it mentions the fact that um, this is in John two twenty three uh, twenty four, and then we'll we'll get into today's lesson. It says, but Jesus would not in. Uh, now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. So he was right. early on was doing something. And we know that by the time he got to Nazareth, that some of that that um, had had gotten back there to them that because it talks about uh, he talks about what he had done in Capernaum. And um, but on on the way to Nazareth, he uh he went through Samaria. He was coming down from Galilee, you know, which wasn't often done. No, they go around. But yeah. that was, and I, that's interesting because that was uh, when he met the Samaritan woman, the first woman, the first person that he um, explained that he was the Messiah. And yeah. the first person that yeah. he said, I am the Messiah. 
And so your first evangelist is going to be a woman. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and and a Samaritan woman. Yeah. And of course, is you know, which is Bible half wonder, Jewish. But, you know, half a, you know, a mix is what they called it. You know, and and they were looking. Which was so that some of them so, more than a pure Gentile. Yeah, you the, know, the whole idea is, you know, the, a, a true Jewish person would have skipped around Samaria. Yeah. Had a lot of extra time. Well, and and, and a Samaritan and and especially yeah, a rabbi. Yeah. yeah. Well, but and also the Samaritans weren't always nice to them when they came through. They wouldn't yeah. always give them lodging. So it was, you know. But but that town that she was from in Samaria, yeah. uh, Samaria, meant some people believed in Jesus and, and accepted His word. So here is an example, and then the, and this was one thing that the people in Nazarene were upset about. Uh, Nazareth were were upset about right. the fact that he said, "Well, God, you know, doesn't base His acceptance on your heritage; it's on your faith." And there were you know uh, Gentiles who showed more faith in the Jews, and, and they didn't like that. Yeah. But anyway, then he, he goes on to Naz, Nazareth, and then, of course, we had the story of his rejection. I, I think it's interesting that um, he uh, they were getting ready to run him off the cliff. Nazareth, apparently, is located on a cliff, and they were getting ready to right. run him off. And something happened. I mean, we're not told exactly, but in a way, there there was kind of a miracle, because it, I know whether it was his, his presence— it certainly was of God because it wasn't his time yet, but it just he just stopped and he walked back through the crowd. Yeah. And harm. And um then after that there were there were um a series of exorcisms and healings. Right. He actually uh healed um, Peter's mother in law, went into the house and I think it's interesting the first thing she did when she got up was start serving people. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, that that just doesn't help us in today's no. time right now when you talk about that. But but that was the that was that's what they did. Yeah, I mean that's what they considered their worth as. You know, it wasn't anything bad or degrading or anything mm -hmm. like that. This is, you know, this is my job. Well, God I think that here yeah, to do this, and I think I'm, that was yeah. showing that she was well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, um, so around this time is whenever right. um, today's lesson we're going to look at. It was also the calling of the. <laughs> In the timeline, going in through. the timeline, yeah. um, awesome. Pretty, pretty much, we have the uh, the calling of the, I, the calling of the first four, because although Andrew is not mentioned in here, it there's the if you go to the account in Mark and Matthew, he is mentioned. Right. But uh, and then there is um, uh, in these verses uh, where it talks about. They being in Simon's boat, you kind of think maybe that might have been Andrew. But okay, so the people he was attracting crowds wherever he went. Yeah. Um he sometimes he just had to okay, <laughs> I need a rest. But uh, I I suppose it wasn't um just this time that he taught out of a boat. Was this kind this kinda of happened often maybe or maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, because he was he was it was around um, the Sea of Galilee that right. he was. He was so. Working. I mean, the the crowd is pushing against him and yes. stuff like that. Yes. So he gets on the boat so he can get a little bit farther so people can hear him and see him. And of course, he doesn't get pushed into the water. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I, I always wonder. You know, if, he, if it was up against a cliff, you know, would they keep crowding in? Yeah. He, you know, that would be dangerous. Yep. So you know, you got sermons on the mount and the plains and stuff that are going on. So you know, I, I'm sure most of this to do with uh, rises and stuff where they could hear. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no microphones or amplifiers well, or that's, speakers. That's why he got out a little ways. In the, away, so and and it's interesting and because it, well, they could have anchored the boat, but um, apparently these fishing boats were a pretty good size. They and, are not small ones. So. They, well, they found one, in, they said in 1986, yeah. um, and it's not, it, they're not saying this was uh, the uh, one, but, the, the yeah, one, it, but, but it was like that, and it would hold 15 passengers. Right. So, so if we start thinking about this, and it I, wasn't a recreational and boat. I'm just pulling it was this a big off boat. my head, so don't don't get me quoting scriptures and like sits and day. But, you know, we're thinking about, they're about 30 feet long. So these boats are a pretty good size. And if we think about, you remember when, when Jesus is walking on water and then Peter comes out of the boat, well, you have, what, many of the disciples in that boat with them. Well, mm -hmm. You know, me and you go out fishing and stuff like that. Most of these fishing boats that we have are like a two or three, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you get up to the, like those party barges that some people do on the lake and, you know, they might have about, 10 people the on regular that barge, two, two and that's is, already yeah. a lot bigger. So we're talking, you know, if the disciples fit in there just fine and going across, you know, 
what the they had to have room for the fish too right but the sea of galilee and stuff like that was known for weather and things so i mean you had to be able to almost do the same thing as uh, uh fishing out in the ocean something that would take a lot of buffering and, and you could still work and it, it probably um they probably had to help steady the boat while he was was yeah, speaking in it probably but but these, these guys had um of course he could have just stayed the book boat yeah he lady, could right? have he could have <laughs> um but um uh verses one through three uh it says that one day as jesus was standing by the lake of gennesaret which is the like which is the Sea of Galilee. It's also uh, referred to sometimes as Tiberius, which is right. a Roman name. But the, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which was probably Simon's boat. The right. one, Yeah, well, it says that. The one belonging right. to Simon. And asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Now, these guys had been out night fishing, and now Correct. I, I, I know my my fisherman husband liked to fish at night because, and I think, and I you know if I'm wrong, then all the fishermen can send you letters. Don't right. don't send me anything. James at Redbud Baptist. At Redbud Baptist, yes. <laughs> but I think it's at, at it's it, whenever at, during the daytime when the water's warmer, the fish try to go. Yeah, you know, where it's they cold, go a lot deeper, yeah. and evenings or nights, yeah. it's cooler, so they come. And, and, you know, and, and of course, you know, food, bugs, things like that yeah. hit the water. So I do know it seemed like you know when I would fish, it seems like the later in the evening, the bed, and the earlier in the morning. You know, if you get the light of the day and the hot heat of the day, it just it's just not, not as good... much fishing. But you you can even be out there in the middle of the day and nothing working, and all of a sudden the clouds come across. You might have a storm come across, and all of a sudden the fish start biting. So, you know, the temperature of the, the lake's changing and stuff like this. And this is a big body of lake. But, yeah. So, usually at night or early morning, you know, uh, is when they're going to catch the most fish. You know, from my experience, you know, with stuff. But. And then they and they hadn't been successful. And they were tired. Yeah. And so, there's, you know. So, um, are do you have this scripture? So, I was. I, I have. Uh, do, you, do you want me to read verse uh, well, four I, or five? And yeah, in just a minute, but um, I just wanted to be ready to read the verses yeah, that yeah. we can. Okay. But um, they were, like I said, they were tired, but they, you know, um, did what Jesus asked. And mm -hmm. I think he wanted to bless them. So, yeah. so, so this is why he tells them in um, read, read verse uh, four and five, please. All right. So we're in Luke chapter five, verses mm -hmm. four through five. It says, And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out to the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I think Jesus, because they had been um, so obliging that, that uh, uh, he 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 felt that it would be appropriate to, to bless them with a catch right. of fish. But we have to think about that, Andy, too. You know, um, you have to be participating in the ministries to see God at work. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you stay at home and do nothing, you're not going to be part of it. So not only is he getting blessed with the the fact that the nets are going to be full here, it, you're also seeing you're seeing a miracle, mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be building up your strength. You're seeing God at work, and you know these guys are going to be the ones that are going to go not only to reach others for Christ with the gospel, but most of them are going to go to a death that's going to be martyred. You'd be martyred and, and the whole time and this is one of the things that helps us understand that all of the stuff that's written in the bible is true as far as apologetics if it was something that wasn't that strong that foundational that built into you through your experiences walking with jesus they would have denied jesus long before being tortured or crucified or, or however they died you know and, but because it was true, and because it was God that they're following and looking at and watching all these things happening, that's giving them their strength and their faith and foundation. And it doesn't matter what these men are going to do to them. They're going to hold their ground because it is absolutely true. And they would face worse things if they denied their, their, their you know, of course, you know, Peter's going to deny about three times, stuff like that. Well, but that's probably about the last time but, you see but, him deny him. But, he, but, but he's, but he's growing. He's growing. So it, I, I think it's more, they're seeing the, you know, these miracles and it, 
it actually is continuing to build their faith in, you know, well, Christ. He definitely, he definitely yeah. uh, whenever he speaks, it's twofold. It's to instruct us as disciples, right. but it's also for the benefit of the people. There's a lot but, of stuff there that is twofold in the Bible. Exactly. You know, it works in multiple ways. More you know, than we, two in some we sense. We can't yeah. think of it that way, but uh, obviously God can, yeah. you know. But we see his answer in verse five, and there, there's uh, basically three points. Three points here. He is doubtful. Peter is doubtful. Yep. He, he says, "We've worked hard all night long and caught nothing." But he's respectful. He yeah. refers to him as master, which yeah. which recognizes Jesus as a person of authority. That will that will change. It's it will actually, be more than a master here here in a little bit. Right. You know. But even master is is more than yes. You know. It is, you know, a lot of respect for that person. You know, I, I am a servant. And, and they probably had heard, uh, you know, they too had heard about some of the miracles that he was for, was performing. Right. And, 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 and like you, so, you said earlier, they this is not the first time they're yeah. encountering and, and, Jesus. And they God's working with their hearts. And, and we'll see here right. in a minute with Levi, uh, with his quick response, God surely was was working with him, but but he is uh, he's doubtful, but he's respectful, but more important, he's obedient. He says, "Okay." So, so, so some, somewhere between teacher, rabbi, yes, to but not quite Lord, yes. So somewhere in between. So there's some type of uh, respect it's growing. That's yeah, that's it's been growing. developing between uh, Simon or Peter and, and and Jesus already up to this point. So you know that there's been something going on in, in this relationship already. Okay, yeah. so. What happens when they're, they're obedient? Verses 6 and 7. Okay, in verses 6 and 7 it says, And when they done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so they even began to sink. So, oh, okay, now uh, we're told in verse... Your cup run up over here. Yeah. <laughs> In verse four, uh, it was it was Simon's boat. Yeah. And but when it says um, they caught a great number of fish, that that may have Andrew was probably, Andrew and Simon together, together and caught, or Andrew, Simon, James, and John. Well, the but boat, they called you know. to James and John later, so they right. signaled to their partners, which partners probably because there were two boats there, right. and they because the nets were breaking, the boats were filled, and they were even beginning to sink. sink. <laughs> And what, in verses 8 and 9, let's look at their response, but but particularly at Simon Peter's response. Right, so 8, eight, and, nine, eight and 9. 8 and 9 says, But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down, down on his knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. Okay, they all were astonished. But uh, none of them had the reaction that, that Peter had. Yeah. And he um, he said, go go away from me because I'm a sinful man. And we, we've seen this type thing in, in uh, some of the prophets, like in Isaiah and Ezekiel, with their, their posture of repentance right. and, and right. worship. And uh, Peter sees himself as sinful and, and you know, <laughs> uh, probably a little scared because... Um, he, you know, if, um, you know, been in the presence of the Lord or been in the presence of a holy one and, and having, and being sinful, you know, it could, could bring judgment, but Jesus more or less told him or showed him at this point, I've come just like today. He is not our judge. He's, he's our savior. And he has said, I have come to condemn the world. I have come to, to say, save the world, save not, the world not, not condemn the world. Right. And uh, this is the theme throughout Luke. You know, this is this is why he. But And here we see Peter address him as not master, but now as father. As Lord. As Lord. So P Peter is growing in his, in yeah. his uh, uh, appreciation. And so, I mean, even more than just the Lord part here, he's saying, I am a sinful man. Mm-hmm. So he, which, he's repenting. He's already repenting. Yes. And, and that's, you know, would you be repenting to one of the Pharisees or one of the Sadducees mm -hmm. or one of the religious leaders or to the rabbi? Not, not maybe not in this way. Not, not without being told to or asked to or trained to. But I mean, this is like, whoa, I'm in the presence of, of a holy God and 
you know, my sin is blaring, <laughs> you know, so he's scary. It's a scary thing. Yeah. Well, it, it's so a, this kind of has a little bit of the feel of Isaiah yeah. a little bit. In it with that, the, yeah. 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 Yes. So, yeah. So, um, but Jesus, Jesus answers them in verse 10. Yeah. And what does he say? So verse 10, he says that, um, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were the partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And they brought, they had brought their boats to land. They left everything and followed him. him. So just real quick, I wonder if they left all the fish there too. I don't know. <laughs> I, well, and and two, did they did they never fish again? Yeah, I no, no. I think they I think they maintained we, their. We, we do see them fishing again. I think it just depends between ministries. I mean, it's yeah. probably still a livelihood for them. Now, like that. Levi probably gave up his profession. Yeah, but but yeah. maybe maybe they taught Levi how to fish. Yeah, but uh, but I yeah you, know, you don't. We haven't got there yet. Yeah, but Levi, but yeah. that's that's <laughs> um, that's what we're to do today yeah. is to give up. You know, he 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 needs to come first. But the um, and you see him briefly go back to it also, uh, you know, after Jesus was crucified, and you know the resurrection when they see Jesus after the resurrection, they're, you they're know fishing. they're out fishing. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of almost a parallel to this because you know they're not catching anything. No. You know, we'll throw it out on their side of the boat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, it um, and they'd had experience with that. Yeah, but um, they're told. Not to be afraid, and this right. is kind of reminiscent of the angels, um, the shepherds, us, and the shepherds, and uh, the whenever the angels, whenever Gabriel came to Mary, and yeah. um, so in, uh, in the Zachariah, presence of, presence of uh, you know heavenly things, he as assurance, yeah, he said, "You don't be afraid." There again, I've not come to condemn, but but to save. But it's save, not, yeah. and um, so. And then, so they brought the boat and they left everything and followed him. And um, here, they expressed faith in Christ. And thankfully, God deals with his children today in the same way. Oh, yeah. We, we have to recognize that's the first, you know, our need of a Savior. Absolutely. And repent and confess our sins and, and, and follow him. Everybody, we call on the name of the Lord. Well, you know, we're saved. Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I have a question here where they're saying, have you ever, like Simon Peter, been minding your own business when Jesus reached out to you? And how'd you respond? You know, where you're, yes. you're doing certain things and you're trying to stay out of whatever it is. Yes. I mean, you're yes. trying yes. to. And the Holy Spirit's coming over you and telling you, you need to get in there and do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're just trying. Uh, I have been in that situation for sure multiple times. But Comf comfortable. Yeah, get, get a little comfortable. Bit comfortable. I want to stay in my comfort mm -hmm. zone. And, and, you know, Don't like, we all? Yeah. When when you're doing things with Jesus or you're doing things for the Lord, it seems that, um, yeah, he's going to take you out of your comfort zone so you're fully trusting him to yep. start with. And that's, that's it. Mm. Okay. Now, verses 12 through 26, we're going to take up next week. Right. Uh, I, d I just want you to um, understand what happened here in context with what going to happen with Levi. Right. This is kind of the, uh, uh, an introduction to the Pharisees here. Uh, it's when Jesus heals a man with leprosy and also a paralyzed man, the paralyzed man. And um, at this point, the Pharisees, actually, they can't help but be a little impressed. But there again, you know, those who are looking for excuses not to follow Jesus' will. So they they get into the... Um, um, kind of get into the middle of the calling of Levi. But just keep in mind as we go on to um, verse 27 that th th this has occurred, that uh, there has been um, exposure to the Pharisees and they're kind of questioning Jesus. Uh, uh, actually, it, it's going to, it's his uh, uh, power to forgive. And we'll, but we'll cover that next week. But um the Pharisees have already entered the picture. But now we're going to go to the calling of Levi. So after this, after this, it says in verse 27, I'm going to have James read that in a minute. But after this, it means after this event right. of the healings is what it's referring Correct. to. Correct, not, not of the boat yes. stuff. No, that, that, that's right. Yeah. So, um, would you go, just go ahead and read 27 and yeah. 28, please. Mm -hmm. 
chapter 5, verses 27 and 28 of Luke, it says, After this, he went out and saw a tax collector, named Levi, sitting in the tax booth. And he said "Follow to, to him, follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. Okay. We th- Jesus certainly had in mind, he knew what, <laughs> what was going to the, what was going to uh, happen next. And now a tax collector, think of IRS. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and these were people that, um, um, and Levi, of course, this is Matthew. This is the Matthew, uh, the, his, he goes by the name of Matthew also, in, right. uh, um, was, was of Jewish descent, which probably made it even worse. But because um, well, you know, he, he, they, they had people, work under them sometimes, but they would collect over and above what the Roman government yeah. required and kept it. I want to say uh, some of the, doesn't sound like the versions have like, was it publican or something like that type of term for it? Publican. I, I and, think that's true. I and, think that's and correct. So that, publican and sinners. Yeah, and it, yeah. it was kind of like um, uh, people that were over people. So what would happen is um, when the Roman government would take over an area and trying to get them act, you know, as part of the whole Mm-hmm. group you know they would bring people in from the the country there to do the tax collecting and stuff but some of the tax collectors actually purchase their right to collect taxes in that area yeah i think matthew i read that this is what matthew had and matthew done. probably was so so he he's going to purchase purchase the right to collect tax in that area and then and he's going to have people he under him uh-huh. and of course we do know there's some type of um I don't know if you call it under the table or promised up, certain off the top, the percentage that they get as well. And sometimes they would overcharge on purpose to, to get the money. Now, this may be one of the reasons why the Jewish uh, people didn't like him, obviously. Well, but but the, the Pharisees may not like him because they thought that you know that these jewish people with, with the money well, they, they weren't they weren't they weren't considered clean the tax they, they collectors were, were never so, welcome so, so here's in another, observant jewish circles right. so the another information on that part not being clean is to do with the fact that they were handling money that had caesar on it. Before, so, yeah. so mm-hmm. it would be like you know they, they could the, the pharisees and stuff considered that to be idol worshiping so they were idol worshiping made them unclean as well as working with the money and, and, so it was, yes um Mm. So he what, but and and no, in in all three accounts in in Mark and Matthew also, Jesus just says the the two words follow me. But I, I Levi probably had heard about Jesus, but apparently the Holy Spirit was working on on Levi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was just you know, and uh, that was all he he so he left everything and followed him. And I don't I don't think that Levi. Return to tax collecting. I, I, I don't, I don't I, think he could. because that was you know right. wasn't like the fishing. So we don't know what he used as no. his. Uh, but he he was he was probably mm-hmm. maybe one of the more of the more educated uh, disciples, and he he um, I read where he possibly kept kept records for right. the disciples, which is maybe it's why they think that uh, he's the author of Matthew. Yeah. So he he. Probably did something legitimate. I think all these guys worked. You know, Paul worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but um, but they were willing to give up to give up what they needed to to follow so, Jesus. So briefly, but, I mean, if we're looking at this, that would be one of the last people that you think a, a, a rabbi would have gone and picked up to be one of their disciples. Mm-hmm. You know, at least I know the Pharisees and Sadducees. Mm-hmm. They saw what so the Pharisees just said. real quickly, just to get underneath our skins, do a little bit of preaching, a little mm-hmm. bit less, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more prodding and less preaching. But but sometimes we'll look at people and we'll see them with human eyes and not God's eyes or spiritual eyes. And we'll already mark them off. Oh, well, they're not going to be a good disciple like that. We'll count them. You know, yeah, just count them. And, you know, those are the people that Jesus or God shows his glory on. Those are the ones that are going to be, because of their changing from this lifestyle to this lifestyle, from doing these things to doing these things, those are the ones that you can see God at work the most. And so what I'm just saying, just a warning to you, if you're looking at some people across the church or just join the church or people that you may be inviting to church and stuff like that, but but you're saying, no, I'm not going to do that because they're just not the right time yet, you know. Well, the right type is sinners. Mm-hmm. That's 100% all of us. 
and, and, right. and, and God can do the work in anyone he who chose all accept, the people who accept Christ as their Savior and allows the Holy Spirit to grow them. So do not discount people just because of anything. Background, finances, race, anything. You know, uh, whether men or women or whatever. Uh, if we expect people to walk in our church and be able to do everything that we're doing already, well, you know, that's not what comes through the doors. What comes through the doors is broken, hurt people, and they need the Lord, and we need to get the Lord to them, and then we need to disciple them. Okay, I'm off, I'm off my soapbox. That's okay. <laughs> but at, at, as scandalized as uh, Jesus' critics may have been at his choice of Levi, the tax collector, mm, mm, to be mm. one of his disciples, mm. the critics found uh, the critics mm. found what happened next to be almost unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so chapter okay, verse twenty nine, twenty nine and thirty. And, it says and thirty. Yeah, and Levi made him. Uh, a great feast in his house, and there was a huge company of tax collectors and other reclining at the table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, "Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners?" Okay, um, mm. so Levi, he was excited. He wanted to share the good news, yep. um, and. It doesn't say that there just were tax collectors there, but who did he know? Yeah. Ta tax collectors, that's who he knew. I mean, those are that's that's his relationship yeah. right now. And just like us, when we first become Christians, the first people we're going to be talking to about, we're going to be talking to uh, our friends. friends and family yeah. around and stuff like that. Yeah. And some of them will accept it, and some of them will not. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, but that's his friends at the moment. At, at that at that time in his life, those are those are his his acquaintances. You know, and uh, I guess the Pharisee. Um, Matthew probably had a pretty nice home, and I and this was an event that was, so, was, yeah. was probably came to the attention of the Pharisees. I don't know whether they were there or whether they caught the disciples uh, going in, but they didn't talk to Jesus. They did not. No, they <laughs> they, they 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 complained to his disciples, maybe yeah. trying to get them. That's who you're associating with, you know? Uh, you know, this guy is drinking with with uh, tax collectors and sinners. And um, they were stabbing him in the back. But um, how could the disciples follow a teacher who claimed to be a man of God, yet engaged in such ungodly actions and associated with such ungodly people, just like yeah. you were? So so they're they're judging pretty much. Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, absolutely. But and Jesus, he didn't give a, he didn't give the uh, disciples a chance to answer. He re and uh, what what does he say? He says in verse thirty one. Okay. And Jesus answered them, "Those who are well have no need of physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to to, to repent." So this is this is like uh, uh, a doctor, and and here again, this was a teaching moment. This was a teaching moment, mm -hmm. not only for the Pharisees, which probably let it roll off their backs anyway, but it was also for for his disciples. And it's, a, you know, a doctor, if, um, what if a doctor said, you know, people uh, will go to doctor for well checks. What if a doctor says, okay, I just want to see the people who think they're well. The one, you people who are sick, you know, yeah. I, I don't want, you know, I don't want to see you. Well, that that's what Jesus was saying. It's yeah. the ones who are sick. And I think in verse 32, um, he he's not necessarily calling the Pharisees righteous, but I think no. it's those those who think they are righteous. Exactly. So, I mean, he's, uh, you know, if, if he's walking around and, and, and reaching the people who are sinners, who, who know they are sinners. Now, see, the Pharisees and Sadducees and people like that, they, they don't think they're sinners. And that's where we're getting the that, righteous. That's exactly I think they're right. righteous in well, their Well, if, if you're righteous, he's yeah. saying you don't need a physician. Right. It's these people that you think are centered. They're the ones that need the yeah, obviously. Need the, yeah. And I, of course, that you know, logic was lost on them. Right now, it doesn't say it doesn't mean that he discounted their sin. No, but he did not allow their sin to keep him away from from yeah, them. So their their righteousness or their self righteousness <laughs> and their piousness and things like that's their sin. And honestly, uh, it's it's the worst. One. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. men. We'll, we'll, we'll put different levels of sin. I mean, sin, sin, right? But at this point, it's keeping them from seeing the true Messiah. Exactly. And that's, you know, that's hard. I mean, that that's the worst thing that could be happening. And and, and they needed 
they needed Jesus just as much as the sinners. Yeah, as the tax collectors. They, they all, there, he, came, so. he came for all. Um, I like this this last paragraph in, in the lesson. It said, mm. the church today has the God-given task of following Jesus' example. We, too, must seek out and interact with the lost. We must go to those in need of salvation with a call for repentance and a gospel message of love and hope. Yeah. Um, if if we can't go to to uh, those that are that are considered, you know, what is our mission? Yeah, I mean the gospel. That's the the strongest part about the whole gospel. It's where you're at right now. You know, these sins, repent from them, accept Jesus as your Savior, um, follow Him from now on. Love the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, trust in Him as your Savior, but. It meets everybody where they're at, no matter where they're at. And, and that's why that gospel message is so important. You know, some people will think, well, you know, I can't come to church yet, which, of course, I realize is a totally different thing. But to do with, you know, I'm not there yet. I don't, I'm not reading my Bible enough. I'm not, you know, I'm, I have all this lifestyle going on. And I can't, I can't go to church and I can't be a part of that group yet because I'm not there yet. We're well, not going to get no. there yet. Until you trust Christ as your Savior and start following him, you're right there. And, and church is a big part of helping you get there, your church family, not the building, but yes. the church family. Yes. So, um, you know, step back in to, to to your relationship with the Lord, you know, fully following him. Step back into your relationship with your fellow Christians. And, and that's what's going to help you get that lifestyle back that you need because, you you know, you love Jesus as your Savior and, and, and uh, you're going to grow in him as a disciple. So it's not your own works. That's making it perfect. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in you that's right. going to make the perfection. So, and God calls ordinary people. Yeah. And He um, through through the eyes of the Pharisees, less than ordinary people. Less than ordinary. <laughs> so. And He saves past, present, and yeah, so. and future sins. That look at look at Peter. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um, he's, you know, he, after he did that, he's, he's going to deny him three yeah. times and stuff. So, it, yeah. what what could be worse, yeah. you know, than denying the Lord? And, and later on, he's going he's yeah. going to reject his Gentile brothers to go to be some Jewish brothers exactly. just because exactly. other but, Jewish brothers are coming in. It's like, <laughs> yeah. and and uh, okay Christ said, it. yeah, but he but he was growing. Yeah, and and um, Jesus said upon this rock upon you know not upon peter personally but upon the, the faith that that you expressed by uh i built my church so it, so it's a it's an important message for us all the way around you know drop the things that are un, that you're not supposed to be doing and follow the lord mm -hmm. follow him as a disciple disciple others bring them along um if you're a sinner um you know turn away from that sin accept christ your savior if you're one of those people that are judging other people because they're not good enough, uh, you need to start looking mm -hmm. in, in with yourself and uh, start reaching out to these people. If that's the only thing that's keeping you from reaching someone from Christ is because you think they're not good enough, well, Christ already solved that. <laughs> you know, no one's good no enough. One's good enough. <laughs> no one's good enough. Okay, so, ne next week that we'll we'll look at the uh, healing, a couple of healings. Yeah. And, uh, um, it's it's real interesting. Um, Jesus does just doesn't always do what is expected of him. Oh, by far, you know, it's kind of passive aggressive, isn't it? Because he? it's going to be a teaching moment, yeah, you yes, know, no and, matter what yeah. he does. So, so um, yeah, people are expecting him to be this or that, even at points that they're following him, and they, they think he's going to do it this way. And, mm -hmm. and he never, you know, he's going to do something totally different each time just to bring attention to God and not to, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening there at that moment. But it's going to be a teaching moment for someone. It may be a teaching moment. For one direction for one group and mm -hmm. another direction for the other group and they both get taught at the same time <laughs> so all right let's go ahead and pray and we'll get out of here dear Heavenly father lord just thank you for um this this beautiful message through here lord that there's so many things that we could take to heart even if we've been following you for years this message is not old mm -hmm. and this message is not something that that cannot still teach us today because it does it reminds us Honestly, that we need to be looking at you and following you in obedience regardless. And Lord, sometimes our, our, our religious leaders get off track, but Lord, the Holy Spirit still keeps us moving forward. 
So Lord, just allow us to follow you and let that be a chance for others to follow or see you working through us and follow you as well. Lord, any opportunities we have to share Christ with anyone through the gospel, let us be aware of it. Open up our eyes and hearts right now. Give us the strength to talk to them and tell them. And, and Lord, let that gospel message ring true throughout this world. And Lord, let the Holy Spirit go before us in all things. Lord, thank you for all our teachers that are working hard for this. Thank you for Red Bud being a chance for people to disciple each other and come together and, and worship together. Lord, thank you for all the things you've done this past year, even through everything we're walking through. Thank you for all the faithful that are staying strong in you. Lord, bless this blessing for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.